if if he took truth away from you you become a politician you become dicey it's a proof that your feet is not strong you did not tarry sufficiently in the place of labor in order for you to come out a prince in your territory hello guys welcome to spirit and light media you are about to listen to a sermon by apostle Aaron of Sai. all right so this sermon was preached at sonship conference all right in revival hope and one of the most striking parts for me in this video was the message he gave to Apostle Edu, all right, during his sermon, right? He had to pause his sermon to advise Apostle Edu on his prayer habits and how he prays. So this is a video you need to watch because it's going to really affect your prayer life and then help you with your consistency in prayer. So as we dive into the video, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel. I've seen a lot of young men that are striving for influence and it is obvious that they don't have the discipline they have not been faithful in prosecuting priesthood and sowing consistently into life and then they are pushing their way using social media to get recognition and get influence the influence can come but like I told you if the local government chairman has not yet been trained to understand how to fast for 40 days and 40 nights and to keep his spirit steady and to hear the voice of God and he comes into that place of influence, he's, he's 100% going to serve the devil. His undoing will be that influence. He would have been a better man that was better off without that influence. Are you with me? Because he entered into the corridor of influence without adequate preparation. So the thing about sowing into the spirit is that God is going to regulate when he brings you into limelight. And that is safe for you. Because you will have the capacity to stand before governors if you stand before a governor and you lie, it means you, you have not, you didn't fulfill your time in the cave. You can stand before them and they'll look small. Because your time in the cave was accomplished. God has given you, you are a, you are a big man in a small body. You are large in the spirit. And the throne that God has put you is more, is bigger than the throne of the governor of that state. So when the governor comes to you, you can tell him that you slept with people's wives. And God is offended. If you can't say that, the influence you have you entered into it another way if if it took truth away from you you become a politician you become dicey it's a proof that your feet is not strong you did not tarry sufficiently in the place of labor in order for you to come out a prince in your territory so while i was sitting here chef loss was ministering and he began to come to my heart a certain man of god in a, in a certain place, it began to come to my heart that I need to sow a seed into his life. Why not? You see, it is the spirit that brought the need to commit to that man's ministry. So if I commit to the man's ministry, I am responding to something that the spirit of God propelled in my heart. So that obedience is a commitment to the spirit. Are you with me? You are not with me. It's a commitment. The Bible says that those that sow into the spirit will of the spirit reap life. The scriptures also say those that sow into the flesh will of the flesh reap what? Corruption. So there are two options of what you can get if you decide to follow this principle. It might still be taken out of your substance. But you see, the question is, who are you obeying? Because even if I was not led and I give a man of God a gift, at least I have assurance of 30 fold return. Are you with me? 30 fold. So the least I can get just doing good to someone that God is interested in is a 30 fold benefit. And this 30 fold benefit doesn't necessarily need to be financial. But it's a law, just like we have the law of gravity. Once you you if i jump up now there is no other direction that i will fall back but to the ground because of the law of gravity so if i decide to sow a seed and i was not led but i just sowed a seed to someone that god is interested in according to the law there is a measure of life i'm going to reap because of that response but if it happens to be that is the spirit of god that led me i am entitled to a 100 fold return because it is a law it is available in the realm of the spirit and i have engaged it and his faithfulness will play out in my life 
now you may not know how critical it is but when you decide to offer a sacrifice you are engaging a law and that was why it was impossible for God not to respond to Noah because Noah was intelligent enough to know that in the realm of the spirit there are laws and he played into one of the laws which is the law of sacrifice and God responded to him and said all right I'm going to make these things constant for you if you know how to interact with the things that I make constant by, by the reason of my sovereignty you'll be able to predict your future just like my brother here I've seen his commitment in the place of prayer he's sowing into the spirit right now it doesn't look as if what he's doing is reasonable until you do it for 10 years then you will see the food I know you are seeing some results but that's those ones are encouragement it's not the real you are not here you are not here. <laughs> it, it's not the real thing no. you are seeing some results and God is encouraging you so, this thing you have started if you can push it for 10 years the impact of the spiritual principle you have engaged you are going to see it literally because you are sowing into the spirit now there is there is politics in the spirit in terms of how long you need to sow before you get a feedback that one is not given to you to know the last man that carried the mantle of revival in my city and the moment the mantle got to him for like three years then he died so he didn't hold that mantle for long so i called the son of the man and i brought him to my house served him food then I asked him just a few questions. What was your father's routine? Spiritual routine on a daily basis. Say, well, this is how this time he prays, this time he prays, this time I was writing. This is how we operate. It's okay. I doubled it in my own life. And I said, Alright. How many years did it take him to crack this city? He said, seven. So I started doing that thing. First year, I was certain that after seven years, I will see the same impact, the same effect that a man's priest would produce. I was certain that in seven years' time, I will see the same impact. Instead of a breakthrough, seven pastors betrayed me the, on the seventh year. It means the time you are not with me. It means my calculation, my evaluation of how long I will maintain that sacrifice, that it will produce a repercussion, was wrong. Because you cannot, you cannot understand cerebrally. You cannot use a mathematical formula to know it. It is something that the government of heaven will have to set up. So when we got to seven years, instead of a breakthrough, I saw a feedback of betrayer. Then I knew that my calculations were wrong. But I knew the principle I was operating was right. But my calculations were wrong. And you see, it is quite difficult when you don't know how long it will take. Especially in a pioneer situation. You, what you have done, what you are doing now, I have done it. So you are encouraged. Me, when I started doing that thing, you don't understand. I needed a formula to, to give me an idea of my expectation within a certain framework of time. And my calculations were wrong. Satan visited on the seventh year. I put myself together and I continued. I began to press. Meanwhile, I didn't know that heaven had put it for 12 years. Because when I said, okay, seven failed, it's okay, maybe it's 14. So I was now doing seven times seven. There's no mathematical formula that can be accurate. <laughs> it was 12 what you are doing today that you are doing every day all right people know you for doing that thing a day we come you will do the same thing not greater the same thing and that that day when you do it it will go all over the world 12 years of consistent investment in the spirit produced a, re a repercussion that this thing you are doing now okay this thing you are doing no 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 don't stand up don't stand. this thing you are doing a time will come where it will produce influence this thing you are doing 
a time will come where God will give you a voice. This, these are the products that you are going to find at the end of this tunnel. One is influence. I hope you know. Someone can be in a village. And uh, he's a quiet man in the village. Until he wins an election. To become a local government chairman. Then angels and demons will begin to visit him. The reason is because the spirit world is concerned about influence the man has entered into a capacity that gives him influence within his locality heaven is interested in influence how he will use that influence because that influence is currency it can be used to adorn the kingdom of god or to adorn the kingdom of darkness spirits are interested whether the man knows it or not whether he was educated or not whether he was discipled about this matter or not just entering that position that platform makes him a haunted species God will be interested in him. Satan will be interested in him. And most of the time, Satan wins that battle in the political front. Then he begins to use the influence to administer a plan that was hatched in the belly of Satan. Influence is one of the currencies that God makes available when a man sows consistently into the spirit. Now, if you enter into influence without God's ordination, that's a sure way for destruction because you will not have the capacity to withstand the pressures that are going to come at that level and uh, because you don't have the capacity to consistently refuse to align with that which is flesh with that which is worldly so that you can use your influence to advance the frontiers of the kingdom of god you become a victim of that influence i went to minister in ghana and as i was ministering in that healing service about five to seven cripples began to walk a few from the wheelchairs a few with crutches and all kinds of miracles took place and there were politicians in the place and they came to me and said can we take you to the president of this country and i told them no that jesus did not tell me that i will be seeing the president you know i don't make any mistake to stand before any political figure without a, being sent without giving a message from jesus if you do that it means you are desperate for influence and god won't allow you speak to any politician all your ministry I said that's not why I came and Jesus did not tell me he was sending me to any politician the people were disappointed because they knew how old are you how old is when old men they go carry don't create what God is not making available you can go there they give you some dollars I say okay we, we believe in what you are doing you know politicians know how to talk those dollars you collect there that Jesus did not approve you to even meet the person in the first place. That's the end of dollars. There are some dollars you, you collect and uh, you will spend Naira all your life thereafter. Because you accepted some influence which God was not giving you. So Jesus did not tell me that he was taking me to any commissioner to pray or any... any... So I went back. Because I was not interested in generating influence for myself. If God, by his own wisdom, because I've seen God, he has he's told me about some ministers of the gospel in this country. It took 20 years before he orchestrated our connection. And it was not me that did, it was the people that did the connection, not me. It's more honorable for you to be invited to a table than for you to be scheming to enter there. And then they now make you a gate man. So, you have come, oh, there's a gate there, you man the gate. So influence is one of the outcomes that will manifest in the season when your compliance is considered adequate. That's one. Two. Another outcome is that the Lord gives you a voice. People in different places, in different nations are willing to listen to you because there's something that God has put in your voice that is relevant to them beyond your locality, beyond your boundary. Pastor, if you go to London and you plant a church in London and the members that come to that church are evil people and you go to Austria you plant a church in Austria and the members that come to that church are evil people and you go to Switzerland and you plant a church in Switzerland and the people that come there are evil people you don't have an international ministry you have a call to the evil nation that's not an evil okay let me you don't like my talk 
it means what you have is only relevant to Igbo people. That's not an international ministry. That is just a mantle to the Igbo nation. So Igbo, nation, Igbo, Igbo people in London, you are going there, they respond to the mantle. Igbo people in Austria, you go there, they respond to the mantle. Igbo people in Switzerland, you go there, they respond to the mantle. But there is no other people group on the face of the earth that is attracted to what you have because you are not relevant to them. When God raises a voice, that voice cuts across tribes. It is multilingual. It is multinational. It is multiracial. There is an ingredient that God will put in your voice that will make your voice have that level of reach. And that is one of the signs that you fulfilled your time in the cave and you did not attempt to promote yourself. One of the evidences that will accompany you if you fulfill your time in the place of sowing into the spirit is that God will give you power. Power. Meanwhile, that's not where I'm going. Those are just, by the way, in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 1, the Bible says, cast your bread upon the waters. For thou shalt find it after many days. Can you interpret this? This is Genesis 8.22. As long as the earth remains, seed time plus seed plus time equals exactly. So cast thy bread upon the water that seed, thou shalt find it after many days, plus time equals find harvest. Exactly. But this scripture takes us further beyond this. And it is beyond this principle. I want to show you something that exists beyond. The sowing and reaping principle. Next verse. People never reach here. People do verse 1. Cast thy bread upon the waters. You shall find it after many days. Only very few people reach verse 2. In their life. It's a give a portion to seven. What's the meaning of seven? Because this scripture employs the interpretation of Bible numerals. Give a portion to seven. And also to eight. Why is he given this instruction? For thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. That's the reason for which he's given the instruction. Give a portion to seven. And also what? Why? Because you don't know what evil will be upon the earth. You know, I told you to underline something. What was it? The principle of seed time and harvest is only true as long as the earth endures. That means if the earth is no longer in place, that principle is cancelled. Exactly. This second principle we are seeing in verse 2 can operate even if the earth is not there. It says, give a portion to seven. And also to eight. Why? Because thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. So the second principle takes us beyond. It is not the earth that makes it work. It's another economy beyond the earth. Okay, you didn't get that. All right, we'll mess. Let's do verse one. We'll just do verse one. Then we'll pray. There are several people on earth, several ministers on earth. The reason why they are relevant is because they, they, the earth is still available. Most of their, the principles that their life operates on is connected to the ability of the earth to endure. And there are another category of people that uh, have entered into an economy and this economy can produce results even if the earth were not there. Meanwhile, two of them are sowing. It's still the principle of sowing and reaping. Cast thy bread upon the waters. You shall find it after many days. It's the principle of sowing. And it is consistent with one of the promises that God gave to Noah on the basis of his own sacrifice. But there is an economy that is higher than that. It is only when you are faithful in that inner channel that God will show you the secret of this one. All right. Um, who knows the meaning of seven? Give a portion to seven. What? Perfection. Okay, what is eight? New beginning. So seven is perfection. Seven means complete. And then eight means another beginning has resulted so this man is saying that 
there are spiritual principles that you can practice that will ensure that when a season ends you will be part of the new season that is starting now many ministers ministry are seasonal if you are sensitive you will know that several ministries have already closed down their shelf life has expired I don't want to as if we were only ministers here i would have gone further but i, I will not go further because the lord will help us uh, you see a man can still be running a ministry are you with me and the chef life has expired it's not as if the man with that he can continue that thing for 20 years but he no longer has a voice that can give direction to the body of christ he's not in the cutting edge of what god is doing he's just doing something it means he became a victim of seasons and he was not given a portion to it and that was why his ministry did not feature in the new things that god was doing um i don't want to expire so i will show you what to do in order for you to feature in the new most of i don't know how to say this and you will Okay, let me be plain. Um, I've seen a lot of young men that are striving for influence. And it is obvious that they don't have the discipline. They have not been faithful in prosecuting priesthood and sowing consistently into life. And then they are pushing their way using social media to get recognition and get influence. The influence can come. But like I told you, if the local government chairman has not yet been trained to understand how to fast for 40 days and 40 nights and to keep his spirit steady and to hear the voice of god and he comes into that place of influence he's he's 100 going to serve the devil his undoing will be that influence he would have been a better man that was better off without that influence are you with me because he entered into the corridor of influence without adequate preparation so the thing about sowing into the spirit is that God is going to regulate when he brings you into limelight. And that is safe for you. Because you will have the capacity to stand before governors. If you stand before a governor and you lie, it means you, you, have not, you didn't fulfill your time in the cave. You can stand before them and they'll look small. Because your time in the cave was accomplished. God has given you, you are a, you are a big man in a small body. You are large in the spirit. And the throne that God has put you is more, is bigger than the throne of the governor of that state. So when the governor comes to you, you can tell him that you slept with people's wives and God is offended. If you can't say that, the influence you have, you entered into it another way. If, if he took truth away from you, you become a politician, you become dicey, it's a proof that your feet is not strong. You did not tarry sufficiently in the place of labor in order for you to come out a prince in your territory. Influence. What happened? I was a public servant and I came back for a weekend to check my family. And when I checked my family, I wanted to go back. I heard that all the roads across the states were blocked. So I began to do my work from home. And I said, how will we be at home? Just like that. Let's be doing program. I said, okay. Then we started. Police came and arrested me and said, you have broken the law of COVID. Meanwhile, we didn't break any law. The law was 30 people in an enclosed place. And we were 15. And the policeman still insisted that he wanted to arrest. So one of our pastors now said, okay, him, he gives himself for arrest. Leave my senior pastor. So we went to bail him for 10000 later. You would think we will stop. No, we continue the next day. Police came again and said they had reliable information that we are breaking the law. I said, okay. What, okay, what is the law? You came to check whether it's broken. They say a minimum of 30 people. We, we were 12. So he said the problem now is that he spent money to come here. That's the problem. The crime now is that he spent his own money to come, and that's a crime. So we now look for his transport money. We gave him the money he spent, and then gave him another money. So we have the crime has finished. He went back. So police refused to come after that time. We continued for 80 days. On the 80th day, they brought a crippled lady to the place. Meanwhile, that's not the first cripple I prayed for. At seven years ago, eight years ago, I started seeing cripples walk when I prayed for them. Have you seen a madman come back to sanity? And all that. And it happens regularly. The fact that there were miracles didn't make the ministry grow. Because I know you are a power man. Power doesn't necessarily make ministry grow. 
I know you want power, all of you here. That's why you're here. You want power to go back and say, shake it to Satan. <laughs> now listen to me. Sit down. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Power will not make your ministry grow. Even if you raise the dead, pray for dead people and they grow, then they rise up. Your ministry will be the way it is. Mm, I'm, I'm assuring you. <laughs> On the 80th day of the meeting, they brought that cripple. I prayed for her. She started walking. That was a cripple that, that was a miracle that went around the globe. And people's hearts were open to our ministry. And when I calculated it, it was 12 years of investment. There is no formula with which you can know if we strike for this long, it will produce this result. The guarantee is that part of the pre predictable laws that God made available to Noah on the strength of his sacrifice was that seed plus time equals harvest. But that time is a variable. It's X. It's a component X. And that's why if you lose your commitment to faithfulness, you will miss X. Your, your X will become XY. May the Lord give you understanding. I have a lot of stories to tell us, but they'll be weaved into the scriptures so that you can understand where God is taking you as a ministry. Don't you, there is an X, but only God knows it. And it's your faithfulness that will keep you navigating until you strike that X. Meanwhile, God will provide enough encouragement to make you know that he has not abandoned you. But there is an X. When you arrive at that X, you enter into a guaranteed economy of the grace of God. Some things will no longer be prayer points in your life because you have stayed enough to fulfill that circle. The true meaning of sowing and reaping, even though if you apply it on other fronts, it's not theologically wrong, but from the perspective of the New Testament, it's a commitment to sow into the spirit. When you keep sowing into the spirit, you keep sowing into the spirit, you keep sowing into the spirit, you will reap life. Now, I need to tell you a few things here. There are a few currencies that you must be acquainted with. When the day of return of investment begins to find expression, God will give a few things, one of which is influence. Influence is the currency of greatness. So guys, we have come to the end of this video. I really appreciate you for staying to the end. I would like to know your thoughts in the comments. What are the things you learned? What are the things you intend to start doing? All right, for me personally, I have seen that for prayer, for you to begin to see the effect of prayer, you have to have prayed for at least 10 years. All right, 10 years of consistency minimum for you to be able to call yourself a man of prayer, for you to begin to see the fruit of prayer. All right, so he is not saying that 10 years is fixed. All right, it's ultimately up to God to determine your wilderness journey and how long it's going to take for your investment in the spirit to start yielding results. All right, according to him, he said there are politics in heaven. All right, so you don't know when. Your spiritual input, your spiritual investment will begin to yield the results. So don't give up yet because you are not seeing results. There's a tendency to want to give up. You have been praying for a while, you have been fasting, you have been trusting God for a breakthrough, maybe in marriage, in ministry, and you are not seeing results. So there's a tendency to be weak in heart. But let me tell you something every spiritual investment will yield results. All right? It will yield results. Do not relent. Do not relent. You just have to trust God for the grace to always be consistent. Keep your eyes on the goal. All right? Keep your eyes on the goal. So I hope you are blessed by the sermon. Let me know what blessed you. Like I've said, like the video and subscribe to our channel because we'll be bringing more videos by Apostle Aram on site that will really bless your life and transform your journey with God. So see you in my next video.